Okay, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to Stepping Up Kosher for this week. And uh, this is the second week that we're going to be taking one topic and delving into it in depth, right? And um, today's topic is going to be eggs. All right? So eggs, from a kosher perspective, have really two things that you need to be worried about. Number one, it needs to be a kosher egg. Believe it or not, there are non-kosher eggs. We yes. were talking to Harley about that. Number she two. Said, she said well, she's talking. Hold on. No blood. Number two is that there cannot be blood in an egg. Thank you. Number two is that we're not, a Jew is not allowed to eat blood, and therefore we cannot have blood inside an egg. Okay? Now, let's dive into it, and then we'll explain what Hani said and why yes. what she said is also true. Okay? So let's start from the beginning. So first of all, an egg, which is laid by a bird, there, especially even by a hen, by a chicken, right? Um, there are those that are we're allowed to eat, and there are those that we are not allowed to eat, mm-hmm. and it depends. It all depends on the, so, so um, it, yeah, it all depends on the, the the bird that laid the egg. Yeah. Okay, now um, the lashon, the, the language that is used in the Talmud for this, this is attracted the Chorot, mm-hmm. is called habamin Sorry, hayotzemin atahar tahar. That anything that comes out of a pure an, of a pure animal mm-hmm. is pure. Now, what that means is, but by pure here, we don't mean pure like purity and impurity. What we mean is pure that a Jew is allowed to eat it. If a Jew is allowed to eat the hen, or, or, the, or let's not call it the hen, the bird that laid the egg, then a, Jew, then a Jew is allowed to eat the egg. Okay? Now, let's remind ourselves, what would make a Jew not be allowed to eat a bird? Anybody it's remember? It's a non-kosher, non-kosher bird. bird. Number one, if it's a non-kosher bird. So immediately, such eggs, for example, like ostrich eggs, mm-hmm. Or, I don't know, other, I don't, I don't know all the Flamingos. different versions. Flamingos, I guess flamingos have eggs, right? Do hawks have eggs, yeah? yeah? Mm-hmm. So all of these eggs would not be kosher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You would not be able to eat those eggs. Now, um, uh, first of all, the, uh, the, the eggs that, uh, the, the reason why, why what Hani said is still true, is because when you, in, according to the FDA, when you go into the store, you buy a dozen eggs, they have to be chicken eggs. Those are all eggs that came from a hen. They're not other type of eggs. Um, let me just answer someone to see everybody's asking. I should have included. We are in the library. People are asking. Here we go. We got a uh, pacifier for her. So that is the deal here. Okay, but that doesn't stop us from the fact that if you're in the wild, we're learning the laws of kosher here, right? We're starting from the beginning. So if you want to eat an egg, the egg has to be from a kosher animal. That is number one. That is the most important thing. Number two is that the animal cannot be treif, right? Because if an animal was treif, that would make us not allowed. Good morning, Yosef. Good morning, Tanima. Good morning, Miriam. Everybody, thank you for joining us. <laughs> All right, find a seat. Anywhere is fine. Help yourself to a bagel, etc. So, what is treif? Well, let's, rem- yeah. let's remind ourselves, what does treif mean? So treif, colloquially, has come to be used just for anything that's not kosher, right? Mm-hmm. But does anybody remember what treif means in, 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 in its beginning? Yes, Ben Sion? What? Corn. Well, that's the literal definition, but what is, it, what is the halachic definition right here, Maria? What is the halachic definition? I think an animal that cannot live... Uh, it's not going to live more than 12 months. We're actually going to reference that law. So if, if you didn't remember it this time, tomorrow night if you're going to be at the JLI lesson, please remember it then, okay? Because then, then I'll feel really bad if I'm saying it three times and you don't remember. All right? So tomorrow night we're going to reference that same, that same term, the term trick. Okay? What's wrong? What's wrong, Maria? Okay, so, um, if an animal is treif, in other words, if, if a chicken was a chicken that was not going to be edible for a Jew because it was not going to be able to um, um, live for 12 months, or it was torn apart, or was whatever, et cetera, or if it was a dead chicken, okay. right, which obviously are not the, the eggs you're buying or else, right, but let's say you're out in the wild and you're surviving, and this is a survivor, uh, what's it, the, the television show is called Survivor, right? Yeah, or Survival, mm-hmm. right? And you're trying to eat an egg, but you found it inside a, a, a dead chicken, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to eat it, because you would not be allowed to eat the chicken. Therefore, the egg that cannot be not allowed to eat. Okay? Now, all these things don't apply, because of the FDA, it doesn't apply to chickens from Ralph's. <laughs> but it is important to know that a chicken has to be, again, the term in the Talmud is, called Samina Tahor Tahor. Anything that comes out from an, from an animal that a Jew is allowed to eat, from a bird that a Jew is allowed to eat, that's the type of egg that a Jew is allowed to eat. So that's number one. Okay. Number two. Please hold, hold the questions for now. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Now, um, it turns out there are signs for a kosher egg. What are those signs? Meaning to an egg that comes out of a kosher bird. 
What are those signs? Those signs are two things. Number one, that the yoke is inside and the flesh is outside. The white, the white of the egg is outside. Yeah. I have never seen any eggs that it doesn't work that way, but right. apparently, well, I know, but we're all talking about eggs that we see in Ralph's. I mean, like, even out in the wild, I'm, I'm no farmer, but I guess there are some eggs that that's not the case, because that's one of the signs they say to look for. Right? Remember, these are all signs, it's always like this. These signs don't make the egg kosher. These are symptoms of a kosher egg. Yes? Okay. And number two is that a kosher egg is round on the bottom and comes to a point at the top. As we all know, eggs from Ralph's to look like. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two signs. All right. What is the second issue on the table when it comes to an egg? Number one is it has to be a kosher egg. Number two? Blood. A Jew is not allowed to eat blood. As we know, it said, thank you, Leticia. As we know, it says in the Torah, in Chumash Vayikra. And also if it's, if it's fertilizing yourself. No, hold on. We're, we're about to talk about that. We're about to talk about that. So the second thing that, we're, that, that, that makes an egg not allowed to be eaten as, as a, a kosher observant Jew is if the egg has blood in it. Okay, what does that mean? As we know in the Torah, it says, dam lo mm-hmm. Any blood you are not allowed to eat among all the Jewish people, whether it's chicken blood, whether it's um, an animal blood. Doesn't make a so difference, no right? So with regards to... Come again? So no blood pudding. Is that a thing? Is that a dish? Yes. Oh, wow. No, no blood pudding. Oh, yeah. For many reasons, void, no blood pudding. Void, void one, void void the... We're getting there. So, um, when it comes to an animal, how do we avoid eating blood? Anybody remember? We put it in a little uh, cup. We break it into a cup. No, no, no. no. When it comes to meat. When it comes to animals, animal blood. How do we make sure we're not eating? Exactly. We salt it. We salt it. We make sure to salt it. We went through that process at least briefly, and we're going to go through it more in depth a little later. Okay. But when it comes to an egg, it's a little bit more challenging. What happens? You can open up an egg. And the egg can have a blood in it. We can have a, or it can have a stain or a blood spot, as we call it, right? So, um, with regards to a blood spot, obviously we're not allowed to eat it. And that blood spot doesn't make a difference if it's red or if it's black. Those two colors are not allowed. Red and black not allowed. However, if if the spot is a brown spot or some other color, a green spot, other spots, those spots are allowed and we're allowed to eat it. Um, if an egg has inside of it two yolks. Mm-hmm. This is a thing, right? We've all... Oh, 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 oh. We've sometimes opened an egg and there's been two yolks inside. And you find a blood spot inside one of the yolks, not of the other yolk. The other yolk is also us or prohibited. You're not allowed to eat the other yolk. So the entire thing becomes prohibited that you're not allowed to eat it. And this should also answer your question about can I remove the blood spot from the egg and eat the rest of the egg? And the answer is no. Okay? So it's not just about the blood itself, but once there's blood... That shows on the whole egg that we're not allowed to. Okay, now, there are, as Marilyn started to mention, two different types of eggs that can come from a chicken. All right, and here they go. One of them is a fertilized egg, okay? One of them is an unfertilized egg. Now, when we say a fertilized egg, we don't mean that we watch the egg get fertilized. What we mean is, if this chicken or hen that laid the egg was in a coop together with a male chicken together, right? In other words, they were, they're, they're, they're growing up, they're living together. You don't have to have watched it be fertilized. The eggs that come out of that chicken are con- or out of that hen are considered fertilized. Okay? Which, and we'll talk in a moment about why that's important. Okay? That's one type of egg. Mm-hmm. If an egg comes from a chicken that is, gro- that is being bred in, a, in, a, in a, a coop, such as, for example, all of the eggs in America, Without a male, they, they don't have time for this, the egg industry. They don't want the male and female, uh, yeah. uh, as it is, they're, most of the process is artificial, as we know, right? They're, they're making day and night, and day and night come within minutes, mm-hmm. etc. But beyond that, they, there are obviously no males around, because they don't want the eggs for the legs, they don't want to have to deal with the egg turning into chickens, etc., right? Yeah. So again, that's something we don't have to worry about because of the FDA. Right? The FDA doesn't allow them to sell fertilized eggs. But there is a concept of a fertilized egg and an unfertilized egg. And halachically, that depends on whether this chicken is being bred in a coop together with a male or, or, or not together with a male. Let me just close the door because it's getting a little out. You can buy fertilized eggs. <coughs> what was that? That's true. You can buy fertilized eggs. And thank goodness Trader Joe's will actually have them separate. These are the fertilized eggs. You can eggs. buy fertilized eggs? Yes. Well, you're saying like in a pet store, you mean? No, no, no in, 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 in the, the grocery uh, store. It yeah. costs a little bit more at Trader Joe's. Really? Okay. Now, it, 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 I, I didn't say we're not allowed to eat fertilized eggs, okay? Which we'll talk about in a moment. But I, I was under the impression they don't sell fertilized eggs. Okay? Are you saying pasteurized? No, fertilized. fertilized. They'll actually say that. 
Yeah. Really? Okay. Uh -huh. Some people like that. Mm -hmm. Not me. And then if you take those eggs and leave them in your house under a, under a nice warm light, they'll hatch? I, I have not even tried. Okay. All right. It's an experiment. All right. Now, why is this important from a logic perspective? It's not like we're not allowed to eat fertilized eggs. We are allowed to eat fertilized eggs, right? But here's how it works. When we talk about kosher, there are two things we should, in general, whenever we talk about halacha, there's two things we should keep in mind. Number one is what we do. And what we do is not really going to depend on the level of prohibition. But there, there are different levels of prohibition, as we know. There's biblical prohibitions, there's rabbinic prohibitions, there's customs, etc., right? So let's talk about it. If you find a blood spot in a fertilized egg, okay, and not only that, you find it in, in what's called makom hakesher. Makom hakesher means the part where the, the it, it, it's really near the point of the egg, um, which is where the yolk and, and white connect, apparently. I guess by the time we open it up, we don't see that, right? But if you find a blood spot there, which basically means that from there, that's the way a chicken would start to grow. So then, biblically, according to the Torah, that's blood that you're not allowed to eat. Okay. What if the blood spot is in a fertilized egg, but not at the section, which is the connection over there, which means that a chicken is starting to grow? Rabbinically, they said, same thing, right? Biblically, rabbinically, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, 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 at the top, in the middle, the rabbi said, this is too nuanced, it, it's too close to a, to a biblical error, and therefore we're going to say, if there's a blood spot anywhere in a fertilized egg, you're not allowed to be able to eat it. Okay. Now here comes the third category, and I want to remind you that even though this is a lighter category of prohibition, so far as it comes to us today, we don't eat any blood spots, right? I'm just, I'm just giving you the whole history. There is a third category, which is an unfertilized egg. So you buy an egg and you know it's unfertilized. Maybe it's even from your backyard and you know there's no males around. So that's just the female chicken. It's the only thing you own. You have an unfertilized egg. And you find, the, you find a blood spot in it. Technically, it's allowed. But we don't eat it today because there's something called marit ayin. Is everybody familiar with marit ayin? Marit ayin means what's visible to the eye. If somebody's going to see you, check an egg, yes. see a blood spot, and just eat it, right? And let's even think worse. If you bring up your children in that way, and that just, just becomes the norm, then eventually somebody down the line, maybe even thousands of people are going to make a mistake and eat a fertilized egg that has blood, and maybe even in the biblical spots, which means that they'll be actually uh, transgressing a biblical prohibition of eating, egg, of eating blood inside an egg. Okay? Well, so therefore, there's prohibition against Maradine. Hold, hold the questions for just one second. Um, now, the one difference that there is... Um, one difference that there is, is with regards to um, the rest of the egg, right? So when it comes to a, a fertilized egg, so the prohibition is either biblical or rabbinical, which is so close to biblical. So then we say if you find a blood spot, the entire egg needs to be chucked. Needs to be chucked. But if you find a blood spot in an unfertilized egg, and it's in, it's in the yolk, obviously, right? You can go ahead and eat the white. That's fine. That part is allowed because the whole issue was only married to which means what somebody's going to see. And, and the, the, the misinterpretations that there's going to be, so we're not worried about that because you're not actually eating the blood. So if, okay? you're, if you're making a meringue... One second, one second. I just want to finish off this point. But today, again, for practical purposes, we just say, it's become the custom today, that if you find a blood spot in the egg, which by the way is so rare, right? You chop the entire egg. Even though technically you're allowed to eat the rest of it, we just say, you find the blood spot in the egg, the whole egg goes in the trash. Okay, now, the more practical case where these types of things... I mean, some of you are looking at me, and you're like, and I know a few of your questions, we'll talk about that in a second. But some of you are looking at me, you're like, Rabbi, you just told me, practically speaking, today we just don't eat an egg if it has blood spots. So what's the purpose of knowing what's biblical, what's rabbinical, what's only married ayin, what's technically allowed, what's not technically allowed? So let me give you some examples of what really happens in the practical world. When you're at home, you're cracking an egg, you're going to fry yourself an omelet, and you're doing it the right way, which we'll talk about in a moment, which is, you take a clear, a clear bowl, and you look at it, etc. You find a blood spot, you check it out, you move on to the next egg. You don't have eggs, it takes another 10 minutes, you go to Rouse, you get another egg, and you move on. Right? Okay. Or you make do with another, with another type of breakfast, good morning, Tom. Um, or you make do with another type of breakfast, and you're good to go. And now let me paint, paint you another picture. Okay? What happens if you're in the middle of making a mixture? Maybe you're even a bakery. And you're making the batch of muffins for, the, for, for this morning. And you're making hundreds of muffins. You have a massive thing here, and there's hundreds of eggs inside it because the recipe is multiplied by a thousand or whatever it is, right? And now in one egg, you found blood and maybe you had it in a cup separate on the counter and one of the non-Jewish workers took it and just chucked it in. He's like, oh, I don't know what this egg is doing here. Boom, he pops it in. And now you come to the rabbi and you say, hey, I have an issue. There's an egg with a blessing that went in there. So the rabbi is looking to allow this batch, mm -hmm. right? 
So that's when he starts to say, hold on a second. Where was it? It was here, it was there. Okay, you know what? It's, it's only a, a custom that you're, that you're going against, so we'll make this batch okay, that kind of thing. And, and that's what we call bediyabed. It's after the fact, it's already in there, you already baked the whole batch, etc. Right? So it's things like that, that these kind of things become, become practical to know those differences. Okay, a couple of questions, let's take them in order. Avram, you had a question. They say if you boil the eggs, the blood, the, the blood becomes zero, is that true? We're going to talk about it soon. You asked that question, right? We're going to talk about it soon. Uh, ben Sion, you had a question. No, just commenting the fact that, technically speaking, then, um, that checking for eggs uh, today wouldn't even be rabbinic. I was just confirming that. Okay, it would be more of a custom. Okay. Um, but the, the checking for eggs is not, is not, is not rabbinic. But uh, most of the blood spots that we would end up eating mm-hmm. are most likely a rabbinic issue or mm-hmm. even just a custom, yeah. Okay. Yes, madam, good question. Oh, I just, I, I'm not going to do, I, you, you answered it. If you, <laughs> okay. there's a blood spot, you throw out the whole egg. Practically but speaking, technically that's Technically, you could okay. use the white part of mm-hmm. the egg. Correct. Okay. To yes, uh, it's good to know that first, uh, all the, like, have backyard chicken, it's, uh, they are laying eggs. There's no males in the, so it's good to know that you can eat, uh, if it's, we find some blood in there. You so, have chickens in your backyard? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, mm-hmm. have to, yes, and they're all female? Egg. Yes. Just okay. laying eggs, there's no male. Right, so then and they're perfectly fine. Exactly, if you yes. find a blood a, a blood spot, you should check it. Yes. Even so, though technically you'd be allowed to, our custom is not yes. good. I always check, I just want to say that uh, 98% of the time, I find no blood. Right. Mm-hmm. So that has to do with other things. I don't know, there's a difference between white eggs and brown eggs. Brown eggs, have brown more eggs, more eggs they always spots. have yes, more. I, eggs. Why? <coughs> why are the... Have a lot of spots. But brown, that's in the store. She has British. natural... Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah, yeah occasionally I have. I don't know the details of that. Why? There are different types of eggs. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. He just asked that question. We're going to address it soon. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's try and address a little bit more in depth that question that I asked about what happens if a, be- if an, a fertilized egg um, that uh, got mixed up with a whole bunch of other eggs. Okay, so now we were assuming, like the case that I gave you was a bakery, we were assuming they're unfertilized eggs. Mm-hmm. You found a blood spot, okay, whatever, fine, no problem. But what happens if a guy has a fertilized egg, right? For, he's cracking eggs, mm-hmm. fertilized egg, he's mixing a whole bunch of eggs in a batch, mm-hmm. and now he's got 100 eggs inside a bowl, and he mm-hmm. finds a blood spot on one of them, but he doesn't know if it's in the one fertilized egg or not, right? So he says, yeah, go ahead. You had a question? What if he finds the embryo of a chicken? Whoa. Then he's, a, then he's a couple steps too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really old egg. <laughs> yeah. yes. First of all, it's a really old egg. Second of all, I mean, that doesn't really fall into, into the laws of blood. That falls into the laws of chicken. Yeah. Uh, you're not really allowed to eat chicken if it's, if it's not slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, and maybe that falls in, maybe it also falls into the Jewish medical ethical, ethical question, which is when does life begin? It's an embryo, it's not a full chicken. It's all different question. Let's stick to eggs, shall we? <laughs> okay. Okay. So a fertilized egg. That, that, that blood is found in the place where biblically it's not allowed to, right? which is called Makam HaKesher. And then it gets mixed up with other raw eggs that are all broken and all, right, all, 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 all cracked and, and, and in there together. So he says you're allowed to take out the, all of the whites of the eggs and eat them. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, all of the yolks and eat them. And the yolk that has the blood in it. And, sorry, I did, okay. Just a, a, a little disclaimer. The word for yolk and the word for white in Hebrew, not, 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 not that very practically, is, is, is uh, one letter off. It's chelmon and chelbon. So first of all, I always mix up the two words. Mm-hmm. Second of all, I think I might have, might have just made a mistake in the way I was, I was reading. So let's do it again. Um, you can take out all of the yolks and eat them. And the yolk that has the blood in it and the rest of the whites, which are mixed up together, all of that you throw out in the trash. Okay. If there are yolks that are connected to each other, remember this is in a case where you know that there's a there's a, an egg in here that's, that would be biblically an issue, right? Because it's, it's a fertilized egg and the, the blood is in, is in the spot where it's not allowed to be, right? Okay. Um, okay, what about if there, if there are yolks that are stuck together and um, the white is kind of dragging along with the yolk because that's just how eggs work. So he says, again, not a problem. You could just take out the whites and, and, and the, 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 those whites, it's okay. You could just take those whites out and eat them. Why? Because probably, why? Because probably the whites that are connected to a yolk, if it's connected to a yolk that you didn't find the blood spot in, what are the chances 
that somehow the white, which is impossible almost to take away from the from the yolk, if you've ever played around with egg yolk, you know this, right? Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible to take it away. One of the chances is that the white from the, from, the, from the yolk that had the blood spot detached and connected to a different yolk, and, and you can't even separate them, right, to a yolk that's clean, that, that, that didn't have blood spot. So we assume, because that's the 99.9.9% chance, that the whites that are dragging after a yolk mm-hmm. that had... That's the yoke from that, from that, from, that's the white from that yoke. Okay. Um, okay, let's stop there for now. What about, what about if it's an unfertilized egg, right? Um, so again, same case. You have an egg that's not fertilized, and you find inside the yolk of it, you find some blood. And then it gets mixed up together with, right inside a vessel, let's say, with a whole bunch, inside a big bowl or whatever, with a whole bunch of other eggs. They're also raw, they're also things, right? So he says, you have to try and take out the yolk that has the blood in it, throw it out, and then everything else is fine. So here you start to see the difference between levels of stringency. When you talk about fertilized eggs, the issue on the table is a biblical one. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't allow something that's biblical. When the issue is rabbinical, so the rabbi said, listen, you're going to lose a lot, just make sure the, 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 the blood itself... And we also have to remember what the reason is. Why are they not allowing it? They're not allowing it because they're trying to keep you far away from a biblical issue. So you're not going to be even close to a biblical issue because you're still going to throw out the blood. So that's why that's the case in a rabbinical mix-up like that. Does there yes. have to be a certain number of eggs? Like you gave the example of a baker where you have a lot of eggs. So the answer is what no. What about if I have three eggs? Right, the answer is no. Three, three is enough. fourth one and by accident I didn't see the the blood until I put it in with the other eggs, I can try to... Right, so the answer it. is, it doesn't make a difference. Okay. The reason is because this is not an issue of nullifying it. You know, you know, like in the case of like the milk and the meat, you need one in 60 or whatever, that kind of thing. Then you're trying to nullify the taste. Here, we're not nullifying the taste, you're taking the blood out. The question is, what is the issue on the table? Is the issue on the table a biblical one or a rabbinical one? That's the whole... But the once one. you start, once you mix everything around, can you still take out that you can't distinguish one yolk from another, then it's too late, right? No, but... If you're mixing it around... Oh, if it's mixed and you around? you see the little piece of blood in there, and you don't know, but the egg is not formed anymore. Right, so you take out the blood spot. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think the answer is you take out the blood spot and you're good to go. That is, you take out the blood spine, you're good to go. Yes, Vicky. So this is an interesting thing for yes. people who, when they're eating out, eat vegetarian or vegan. Because if you're at a restaurant that is making eggs, right, more than likely, if it's not a kosher restaurant... They're not checking. They're not checking. So, so this is a more general question you're asking, okay? Yeah. Which I, I think was built on an assumption. So let's start with the assumption. Is a Jew allowed to eat, eat in a vegan or vegetarian restaurant? Um, and the answer really is no. No. That's for, really the answer. This is one of the reasons. And this is, why. this is one of the reasons. The other reason is, is bugs, that they're not checking for bugs. Mm-hmm. And the third reason is that there's really no oversight. Nobody is checking to make sure that that's the case. Like, the laws with regards to vegetarian or veganism depend on, I don't know, who's, 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 who's running the restaurant and how strict mm-hmm. they are about it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? What's the other type of people that are like, eh, as long as I'm not serving it, it's fine. But what about the vessels? The vessels, yeah, I can make, I can make pork in this pot on my own time, and then I'll use it to make a vegetarian dish, which I'll, which I'll serve to the people, right? So, so that becomes, that's the, the all these things are why, we, why, why in today's day and age, when everything has become so commercialized, we really rely on something called a heksha, which is an oversight. There's a mashgiach, there's a, there's a, 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 a supervisor, a kosher supervisor in, 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 in the restaurant, etc. Um, for context, um, and there is another reason that you gave to, for bugs. to me when I asked you, no, about why, what was why the other it isn't safe to There's eat many bacon. reasons, but what, what was the other one? The other reason that you said was that you don't know where the equipment, if it was purchased mm-hmm. new. That's another thing, or, yeah. Or mm-hmm. if, it was, if, if equipment was purchased new. Yeah, first, of, first, of, first of all, so that ties into what I just said about a, a vessel maybe having, having been used to cook something not kosher. But another point is that maybe it has to be immersed in a mikvah. That also wasn't done. Like, there's so many details in kosher. And I think really this class is the one that's going to enlighten you to that. Because when we think of kosher, usually we tend to think of, yeah, chicken needs to be kosher, and meat needs to be kosher, and it can be mixed with milk. But that's not really all the details in, in kosher, right? There's so many other nuanced details, as discussed throughout this, 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 uh, this uh, class, right? Okay. Um... What about the vessel? What about, what about the pot? 
if you cooked uh, an egg in a pot and then you found the, 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 the blood spot later, right? What's, what's the din about the pot? So the pot should not be used for 24 hours, and after that you can use it again, and there's no need to kosher it. You don't need to kosher it. Okay. Um, one of the one of the next things that, that uh, everybody's been asking about, and I think this is where it ties into what Hani mentioned at that class, is eggs in the store, right? So eggs that are sold in the store, um, and they can be from different companies, doesn't make a difference, right? Um, uh, and they can be fertilized eggs or unfertilized eggs, etc. Um, so the way that we work with regards, right? So, so in other words, the question is, if you buy eggs in the store, and it's not labeled, let's say it's not labeled fertilized or unfertilized, Go to a farm, just get eggs. You don't know if they're fertilized or unfertilized. You ask the farmer, he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's the chickens that were in the coop together with the males, not together with the males, etc., right? Um, so today's day and age, we say that if you go to the store, not to a farm, I'm going to exclude a farm because a farm might be a different case, but if you go to a store and you buy eggs, um, the, the, because the, the large majority of eggs that are sold in stores are unfertilized, so therefore the assumption is that they're, that they're unfertilized until something proves them else, else, elsewise. I haven't seen this in Trader Joe's, but apparently Trader Joe's sells fertilized eggs, Miriam mm-hmm. says. So then if it says on the box fertilized, then you can't mm-hmm. rely on the majority of them being unfertilized. <laughs> but if you just buy eggs and it doesn't say fertilized or unfertilized, they're not guaranteeing one way or the other. You, you're a, a, our halachic assumption is that they're unfertilized, and then that all the halachas that follow, which is depending where the blood is found, etc. Is it rabbinic? Is it just uh, because, because of mix-up, etc.? All of those laws follow in turn. Um, okay. Therefore, if eggs are mixed up together and you find blood inside one of the yolks, um, the main thing you need to do is just take out the yolk with the, the yolk that has the blood in it and throw it out, and, and all the other yolks, all the other whites are fine. Why? Because in today's day and age, right? but, well, everything we just said till now has been differentiating between whether it's a biblical fertilized egg or a rabbinical unfertilized egg, right? And because today you buy eggs in the store, we're assuming that they're unfertilized because that's the majority of them. So therefore, if you have a whole bunch of eggs and one, one of them is a blood spot, the thing is you just take out the blood spot together with as much of the yolk as you can from that egg, uh, ideally, it's it's whole, and then you just take out the entire yolk, and you're good to go. Um, the rest you can eat. Same thing if uh, if 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 the egg that has the blood drags other ones together with it. Getting tired of the right on the basin itself is. Uh, yes, if you mix them up together, then everything is allowed, right? If if you if you whisk them all up together, then everything is allowed, and if. Um, 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 a, uh, a, a pot was, right, and the same thing that we just said, if a pot was used to cook these eggs, then that, that pot, and one of those eggs had, had blood in it, etc., then that pot would be allowed to use as long as you wait 24 hours before you use it. Okay. Moving along. Boiling. Everybody wants to know about the boiling eggs, right? Okay, so one of the things you need to, okay, so if somebody wants to fry an egg, um, the first thing he should do, what's, what's the proper way to fry an egg from a, from, a, from a kosher perspective? You take the egg, you crack it, you drop the yolk into a clear, clear. clear. very good, very, clear. very important, clear, glass, Pyrex, mm-hmm. something like that, or a clear cup of some sort, even plastic, something you can see, pick it up, take a look, make sure there's no blood in it, <clears throat> and then you fry the egg, that's the proper way to do it. Now, million dollar question, this happens to us all the time, what if you forget? Right, what's if, what if somebody forgets to check it, and after that he already mixes it up and puts it into an, into an omelet, and then he eats, and, and and then he has it ready, and he's about to eat breakfast. He's like, "Oh darn! I can't believe it! I forgot to check the egg." Right? Yeah. You're allowed to eat whatever it is you're using it for. You're allowed to eat it. Why? Because we assume. Remember, what are we assuming? We're assuming most eggs are not fertilized. Okay. Most eggs don't have blood. So we, if, if this is a bedievet case, if this is a case where it's post facto, then we're going to go based on the majority, and we assume that it's based on the majority. Well, it's interesting. Yes. Okay. It seems like the kosher laws aren't as strict for eggs in a way. It's no, so you're going to see very, very similar laws when it comes later, even to yeah. milk and meat. If it's after the fact, and there's a little bit of milk inside, inside your meat dish, yeah. That's so uh, obviously they're gonna, we're going to have to make sure it's not like a uh, full mix. But if it's after the fact, then that's when the law of like 1 in 60 applies and things like that. Right? Why? Because once it... Once it and, and by the way, this here, this is not so much a leniency in eggs. It's a leniency in after the fact and we don't know. When we don't know, the, our best guess is going to be based on majority. And that's often the case in Allah, that after the fact, we go based on not knowing. Um, in the Gemara, it even talks about meat. Somebody finds a piece of meat on the floor. On, a, on, on butcher's row. And there's like 10 butchers on the block. Mm-hmm. If nine of them are kosher, and one of the butchers is selling non-kosher meat, then I think, I don't remember the exact details, but I think you can assume that it's kosher. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's, it's, a, it's, a long, it's, a long, it's a longer it's a longer discussion than the Talmud, so I wouldn't base any, anything you do based on that. My point is that it, this is all a discussion of post-facto. We, we're in a situation now where we can't know, it's impossible to know, 
right? You can do everything you can to know, but then it turns out there's nothing, nothing to do about it. There's no way to know. So then we go based on the majority. Does that make sense? Yes. We're getting to it. Okay. If you want to boil eggs. Mm-hmm. What? I'm sorry. I asked Hani about uh, rabbits and honey, and she said that. But the odd number. Is that... Three. At least three eggs. Yes. And they're good. Let's do that right now. Okay. Yeah. If you want to boil eggs, okay, so the custom is that they should be boiled in an uneven number with a minimum of three. So yes. one, not one. Whoa. Do at least three. Why? That's a good question. In order that if blood is found inside one of them, mm-hmm. oh. it should be in the, in the minimum, in the, in the, not in the majority okay. of the eggs. Now, obviously there, there, is the, there, there is the possibility that you're going to boil 71 eggs together <laughs> and you're going to find 30, 36, uh, 37 Eggs that, that have blood spots in it, right? But the, case, the chances of that are like very, very slim to none, right? So as a result, we're talking about a situation where you're most likely, if you're going to find blood, the most, most likely the case is you're going to find blood in one of them. Mm-hmm. You, want, you don't want to be in a situation where it's like, oh, now it's 50-50. Or now it's only one egg. Okay, well, if it's one egg, it's one egg, right? But if one egg, then you find blood, then you don't find blood. But if you're boiling eggs, you want to boil a few eggs, it should be a minimum of three, and you should do them in odd numbers. Why? Because then the rest of them will be the, will be the majority. So. What are you going to do with the other two if you only need an egg? <laughs> You know, like you have a recipe. Correct. Co- egg, yeah. Like tuna, you know, you're putting in an, a little bit of egg. And, so my you know, advice as a rabbi, three, my rabbinic advice, salad, right? my rabbinic <laughs> advice is you put them in the fridge yes. Yes. and the next day you have eggs for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's the other solution? Avram has another rabbinic solution. You shouldn't eat eggs. You don't get cholesterol. It's all good. <laughs> That's not, that's not correct anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's not correct. It is good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Okay. And you have to have some, but not too much, and not correct. too little, and not too, like everything else in life. Okay. And, and they'll go the back and forth number? over the next 10 years. Okay. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Why the odd numbers? Why does it have to be an odd number? Because you want majority. it to be a majority. If it's one and one, it's going to be 50-50. Uh, yeah. And in my house, majority, yeah. But what's mm-hmm. the difference between five and seven? Right, if you, but at least three. Same thing. Same thing. You want it to be a majority. Yeah. Yeah. If if it's five, if it's five or seven, meaning. If it's five versus four, if you have four eggs, if there's right. two and two, it's going to be 50-50. But with five, it's impossible for it to ever be 50-50. I see. Now, it could be, like I mentioned, it could be there's going to be a majority of non-kosher eggs, and then you're going to be even royally uh, messed up, right? But, so, so it always has to be an odd number. Yeah. You yes. should cook in an odd number mm-hmm. with a minimum of three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In my house, he offers to eat the third egg. What? He offers to eat the third egg. <laughs> he always offers. He's like, the recipe only calls for two, I'll eat the third one, no problem. So that was my rabbinic advice. You put them in the fridge, you have them for lunch tomorrow. That's it. Oh, yeah? Of course, yeah. Oh, for sleeping? Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. I put something on your desk. Thank you. Okay. If there's no one else, then sure. But I prefer not. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we were in the middle of uh, boiling. Boiling eggs, right? Okay, so that's the first thing you should do it in... Um, in 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 um, in rust. By the way, this is not just to avoid that that your eggs should be kosher. It's also so that because the majority are kosher, it's going to make that the pot is not going to be an issue. Mm. If the majority were not were, had blood in them, then the whole pot is going to have to be kosherized, right? So that's really that's really the issue. Okay. Um, so my little pesat pot where I cook one or two eggs doesn't work anymore <laughs> because that's what I use for pesat. I have a little small pot okay. because I, I don't eat that many, right? So when I boil, I would boil one. Oh. And you're saying I can't boil two in one either, so I have to get a new pot. <laughs> yeah. Another detail, folks. Another detail. Many people are, are careful that when you when you are cooking eggs, right? So what, I, know, I know there's a lot of different, uh, very very heated opinions about how, what the easiest way to get an egg to peel is a boiled egg to peel, mm-hmm. right? But let's talk about this for a second. <clears throat> um, if you are um, uh, boiling eggs, there's two ways, and the eggs are done boiling. Now what? So there's, two, there's two ways to do it. One way is to take the whole pot, strain it of the hot water, mm-hmm. fill it up with cold water. Mm-hmm. Right? And then now you can deal with the eggs. Another way is to take a metal spoon, stick it into the boiling hot water, and take out the eggs one at a time. Mm-hmm. Halacha advises the former. Why? Same reason with the kosherizing. You're taking a metal spoon, you're putting it into a pot now, but you don't even know what's going on in there. For all you know, the whole pot is going to be treif, right? And now you just took your spoon and you made your spoon treif. Everything, oh, yeah. by treif, I mean the colloquial treif, right? So th- therefore, everything, everything's going to be not kosher, and then you're going to have to um, kosherize the spoon. So in order to avoid that, they say first fill up, fill up the pot with cold water. And then uh, move on. Yes, sir. About a uh, supervision when you go to the restaurant and you, uh, you want to boil the eggs. If the person knows for sure if he does a uh, three eggs in the, in the pot, so all of them become 
What? What's the question? Do you remember my point? In a restaurant. restaurant They're boiling is, eggs. Is, is, is kosher or not kosher? If it's kosher restaurant, yeah. they, they care about has to be odd number on the... They oh, yeah. So you're saying it's another reason why a vegetarian yeah. restaurant without a hefsher is not allowed. Yes. There's many, many, many reasons. Ultimately, what it boils down to is that there's nobody in there that cares about the laws of kosher. So you're, you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. You're assuming, right? Meaning, here's my point. You go to a vegan house, you're in, a, you're in better condition. You go to a vegan house and you ask, the, you could just ask the people, you say, hey, listen, uh, what you're giving me here, was it cooked or, is it, or was it raw? It's raw, no problem. What was it cut with? It was cut with a knife that wasn't used for anything else, only used vegetables. Okay, I know I can eat it. You go to a restaurant, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You're not going to call over the waiter and start like, grilling the waiter. Even, even if you do, the waiter's going to move you on to the chef. And even the chef is probably not going to know because he does, they don't know these laws. These are not the things that they care about. In, all, in other words, ultimately, when it comes to, this is, I know we brought back up the vegetarian restaurant now. Ultimately, what it boils down to is that a hechsher, a, a kosher certification on a restaurant, is not just about telling you that the ingredients that are used are kosher. It's telling you that there's, a, there's somebody overseeing everything that's going on inside this restaurant that cares about kosher, and his job is to make sure the laws of kosher are followed. In a situation where that's not the case, it's very, very hard to say that, which is why even when it comes to things, items that are, that are always kosher, right, and that are sold in the store, rabbi, not rabbis, um, by, by rabbis, I mean rabbis like uh, Rabbi Anoka's brother, right, that are like kosher aficionados, they work in the kosher industry. These rabbis, they'll always advise based on certain things. For example, when it comes to like fish, salmon, they'll say it's allowed because you can't really have salmon that's not kosher, but only if the salmon is not treated. You know, like they'll give you certain conditions. Right? Yes. How can, uh, we had this yesterday, we right? We had this. Salmon? Yeah, we were talking about kosher and With salmon. Yeah. yeah, and we were talking about um, could we buy salmon at a non-kosher store um, because they, they, they're using a knife and we don't know. So the answer is that you're allowed to. The answer is you're allowed to, as long as it's pre, pre, pre-packaged salmon. The question was, so at Trader Joe's, for example, right, exactly. When you go to the fish counter, you're not allowed to. Yeah. Because the fish counter, they can be using the same knife to cut swordfish mm-hmm. and then cut salmon. But if you want to go, for example, to Trader Joe's or even in, 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 right. in Rouse right. and buy the pre-packaged salmon which comes from a factory, that's different. Okay. Why? Mm-hmm. Because even if they are using, so, so, there is a stringency just to make sure to rinse it off properly, mm-hmm. just in case your piece of salmon was the first piece of salmon mm-hmm. when they were when, when they were doing hundreds of thousands of pieces of salmon yeah. right before that they were doing something 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 not kosher and yours was the first piece of salmon in line and then they used a the knife just in case so people will rinse it off. Mm-hmm. But because those chances are slim to none, mm-hmm. you can buy salmon like that from from, from a store. And the, this a lot, has a lot to do with the fact that salmon is the only thing that has that unique color. It's the only fish that has that unique color. Uh. So um, now, even then, some people like to be stringent. They don't buy skinned salmon. They only buy salmon with the skin on it because then you can actually physically see the scales. And by the way, this is going to tie to another law, which we actually discussed even in our cliff notes of all the laws, which is that, um, oh, well, I'm going late here, um, which is that um, any fish that has scales automatically had fins. So you don't need to see the fins. Okay, let's move along here. One more gross halacha. Um, which is that if you would like to swallow an egg whole, a raw egg whole, and you don't want you don't have to check it for for blood, it's fine. Um, uh, we assume that there's not going to be. And the same thing, um, um, if you want, yeah, um, if you want to eat a uh, a cooked egg, right? You could also just swallow a hard boiled egg, mm-hmm. or even just chop it up. If you didn't check, you could swallow the whole thing. Also, you're good to go because we assume that it will. Okay. Um, let's stop here. What? Raw means it's not cooked. You cannot eat it. What? You could. Well, you, you shouldn't eat it. Correct. It's unhealthy. I said it's a gross halacha. There are people that do it. I think the cantors, they do it. No, they say that cantors, they do that to, to help their voice. I don't know. Is that true? That's your choice. I don't know. I've never done it. I don't know. <laughs> a rye. I think they put it into a juice or something. No, he, want, he wants to know if you can, if, if when you eat a raw egg, can you eat it with a shell? I said, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. All right. Thank you all for joining us for Stepping Up Kosher this week. That has been the laws of eggs. Thank next you. week, we'll move on to the next topic. And we'll see you all next week, same time, same place. Thank you to everybody who joined us on Facebook. Rabbi David and Shelly and Larry, thank you for joining us. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.